And Kairut said, A man who knows how to do it also knows that you can't tell anyone else exactly how to do it. But on with the show. And Kairut said, Over in the city, when it came time to think, one man said, I brought my own background singers. <laughs> and Kairut said, one man with back problems handled it by only bending over in the opposite direction. <laughs> the Minister of Finance asked, did you say allegorical back problems? And Kairut said, one man put two shelves in every bookcase he built. He couldn't seem to do otherwise. And Kairut said, after being shown some untried, untethered thoughts, the man stepped back and said, I'm not getting into one of those. And Kairut said, whenever he'd care, one man would make it a point not to. Kairut's Guidelines for a Decent, Satisfactory City Existence. Talk of age leads to age just as conversations regarding stupidity have their place. <laughs> and Kairut said, humans are the noise produced where the universal becomes the local. And on Saint Surprise Day, Kairut said, only the ordinary have nothing to lose. And Kairut said, in the rebel's lexicon, profanity only has one letter. And Elsa, RSVP, the old party giver, Kairut, said, advice is the door prize given everyone after they're pretty well liquored up and out of. <laughs> A certain obscure travel observer remarked, once people are on the bus and groan, it's almost impossible to get them to change seats without making them mad. <laughs> a man who heard this chewed on it, then wondered, does he mean that if you make people change seats, it will always make them mad? Or that you can't get people to change seats without first making them mad? And Kairut said, under certain conditions, even a man's shadow can desert him. <laughs> and Kairut said, although the pursuit of the fulfillment may occur in the secondary realm, all motives themselves are primary in nature. And Kairut said, here's one guy's judgment on the matter. Great expectations are what keeps expectations going. That and people being alive. One man says he had to move from the city because he kept confusing the two concepts of midtown and meltdown. <laughs> Tempting, is it not, said Kairut, to speculate on his potential as a rebel? And Kairut said, by way of encouraging a bit of, shall we say, stealth and tacitunity, <laughs> one old man told the kid, as you intellectually drive through the verbal neighborhoods of the ordinary, remember this, my boy, show what you know and lose while you cruise. <laughs> this may be why rebels, even those with convertibles, keep their tops up. Be forewarned, warned one native warner. <laughs> Local reality has its eye darn well out for anyone, and I mean anyone who gets too creative and original. And Kairut reminded of how the rebel's world is not the same as everybody else's by saying, 
When the ordinary don't know what to think, they'll think what they're supposed to. An observer of these proceedings said, just the idea of being different makes me shiver. Inside, that is. I do have it right, don't I? And Kairut said, one man had a secret machine that did secret things. He kept it in his brain, that secret machine. And Kairut offered some Fleet Street news for the presently slow of foot. Even those without papers write letters to their editor. A man who once saw the Kairut show said he thought that a lot of it actually just had to do with the mind. Out of town at sleazy motels, some thoughts will check in under the name of beliefs. And Kairut said, for his final trick, the city magician leapt halfway in the air and declared, health is an illusion. And Kairut, dressed up as the let's be direct man, who, come to thought on it, he might have been originally anyway, said, anything men can talk about can't be explained. Then, speaking for yourselves, I'm sure most of you said, that explains a lot. <laughs> and Kairut noted, to civilized ideas, all familiarity is improper. And a kid asks that we all be reminded that a comprehensive definition of civilized is being predictable. And Kairut noted, a real artist ate his own feet years ago. And Kairut said, dumb people think everyone else is dumb. And Kairut added, that's how you can tell they're dumb. And some people who heard this thought, we don't think we care to raise any questions in this matter just now, thank you. And Kairut said, turn the page. And Kairut said, actions local, motives and consequences universal. Then one man told this one. There was a guy who named his dog Wisdom, since he knew he wouldn't come when he was called anyway. <laughs> And a man standing in earshot asked, is that an old joke? And the speaker replied, no, I just made it up. And the man said, but you know, it sounds like it. And upon reflection, the teller had to agree, though he wasn't sure why. Such, annotated the visiting cosmic philosopher, is sometimes the nature of humor, and of words, and of animal stories, and other miscellaneous shit. There once was a band of warriors on this planet who would in instantly open fire on anyone who began their comments by saying, the nature of such and such <laughs> is that, etc. And Kairut said, the respiratory x-rays of some realities reveal the presence of one lung and a corresponding sac-like repository full of critics. <laughs> One chap told his son, never chase a man who has a spray gun. And the boy asked, why not? And the father replied, all right, chase him then. And local life stepped in with its moral as slogan, words are a terrible thing to waste, which is why I don't waste them. And Kairut said, the civilized civilized remain fascinated with seers and forecasters insomuch as everyone knows what's coming and just doesn't want to think about it much. 
a man says, why don't we just get right to it and say that what's coming is the universal? All righty, sir. Go ahead and say it. And then Kairut kicked in to add, for those on, on a single-storied merry-go-round, what's always coming next is the rest of the merry-go-round. <laughs> and this semi-dramatic presentation from the boards of Kairut. The innate intelligence of life is such... Okay. The innate intelligent, intelligence of life as apparently manifest through man is such that when it's time to trip, many men will go ahead and fall down in advance. <laughs> One guy snorts. Okay, you Mr. Know-it-alls, tell me this. If life's so smart, then what the hell's it doing hanging around with the likes of man for? <laughs> it may not be any of my business, but men like that run the distinct risk of developing overheating-induced tumors. <laughs> The city's spiritual physician said, in healing the hearts of men, we have two main laughs, I mean labors. <laughs> <laughs> and Kairut said, according to legend in one galaxy, the progression of a rebel goes like this. In the beginning, he wants something, but doesn't know what it is. Then he hears about the revolution and wonders what it is. Then he decides, that it is the revolution he wants. Then he figures out what it is. Then further on he realizes he's not exactly right in his figuring. Then he begins to wonder just what the revolution actually is. And Kairut said, this seems about as good as place as any to stop. In a somewhat delayed response, a man comments, after more than 5,000 years, and after all that's already been said, I can't for the life of me see how you can say that five words can say it all. And Kairut said, During what was reputed to be a pretty disgusting weekend, two low-rent realities were hanging out, and one of them said, Is it finally going to come down to it? Come down to a final struggle between those who want to fuck and those who want to think? <laughs> and his running bud replied, Jesus Krugers, what a choice. <laughs> and Kairut said, during, during the convention's 10 a.m. coffee break, a stranger stood in the hotel lobby and quite loudly declared, Critics are the artistic energy that makes buses fly. And a man passing by stopped and appeared ready to respond to this comment, but then seemed to think better of it and moved on. <laughs> One Mary told the lamb, the first thing to capturing a tiger is to call him a tiger. A man upon hearing this and coming dangerously close to comprehending it thought, you know, if I didn't like me so much, I'd use that on me. One guy comes around to confess. Every time I get really serious about something, I feel like life is laughing at me behind my back. <laughs> <laughs> and Kairut said, one chap believes that heaven will be a place where they'll refinish your furniture and have it back to you on the date promised. <laughs> one man chuckled and mused, ah, to live in simpler times. <laughs> and his mind said, ah, but you do. <laughs> Note, after a certain age, many people stop conversing with their mind. Oh, if you ask them, they'll say they do, but they don't really. Yes, sir, your stuff will be ready next Thursday. And Kairut said, 
One modern reality snaps its creatures back in line by giving them more than a straight year's worth of badly done TV and a string of bland pedestrian movies. As the collective organically expands, it becomes more concerned with being entertained than it does being fed. If you're interested, there's another reality in that same universe who keeps its little beings towing the mark by periodically reminding them that its middle name is vindictive. And Kairut said, a taller rebel told a shorter one, only the old and idiots write odes in praise of age. Then a harsher rebel told a less harsh one if a man had any real spirit, he'd die instead of get old. In a non-rebel interested party, upon hearing these comments, said, I guess you already know that I sure hope all of this is meant allegorically. <laughs> Another of Kairut's defamatory definitions. Culture. The verbal transformation of hormones brutishness into poetic odes of secondary joy. Further insulting verdict. Those who favorably rhapsodize on man's animal nature are the semi-civilized who still scare themselves and otherwise have no clue as to where it's all headed. One reality in the grip of a passing snit, snuffed, regarding the creatures in his care. They think secondary affairs like politics and economics can be upsetting. Well, they get a load of death. <laughs> then, outside the reach of the advice doctor or Miss Etiquette, a viewer writes to our newest in-house columnist who has no name. <clears throat> Dear No Name, <laughs> will becoming a revolutionist cause me to lose weight and make more money? <laughs> yes, he replied. <laughs> <laughs> a man noted, if you don't compare bus tickets, people won't even consider going anywhere new. And he was asked, is this part of the safety guard built into the revolution? And he responded, did you say landmine? <laughs> One loose-limbed observer looked at the city and said, even if you grant that the people over there, both leaders and otherwise, know what they're doing, it's still funny. <laughs> A man says, I saw your last show, but I want to be sure I got something right. In the middle of one of your Kairut stories, did I hear it said that one day the cats wanting to go out caused the rain to stop? <laughs> Though not wishing to further disorient anyone, or otherwise disturb them needlessly, Kairut did happen to mention that a revolutionist trying to tell others how to do it is like the wind telling the air how to blow. <laughs> Everyone's born knowing what to do, and everyone lives like trying to forget it. And Kairut took us back momentarily to a previous area by noting, Couth ideas find all familiarity to be on. <laughs> One kid turned to a playmate and said, Just consider, in the primary world there is no such thing as seriousness. The closest thing would be non-existence. His buddy rubbed his little chin for a while. They replied, me wonders if the likes of us could use the likes of that 
kind of info somehow in our own secondary life. Later that afternoon, they came up with a new definition. The rebel. A man on drugs who's not on drugs. <laughs> and Kairut said, Civilization and normal progress is where the universal and local tolerably meet and divide. The revolution is someplace else. Subscript query. Why do civilized kings, priests, and warriors smile as they lead the people? Answer. Because they don't have to. One of the early things a rebel begins to suspect is that his own mind may be laughing at him. Kairut's local lore. One man didn't have a library in his hometown. Another gentleman didn't have a hometown in his hometown. Kairut's additional data for uncertain locales. Being a neural rebel is like being able to leave home after you finally realize you weren't born anywhere in particular, though everyone else now believes otherwise and are all involved in discussing bus schedules amongst themselves. One day an intellectually antsy sort of guy was about to whine and say, ah, I don't have anybody to really talk to, when he caught himself in time to say, hey, what do you think I've got you for? And from a still more advanced view, <clears throat> the great human conspiracy, shame, conspiracy shamelessly revealed. Mr. Chrysler said to Mr. Ford, Well, I see your new models are out. In this diagnosis from Dr. Kyrut, license and patent pending. There is no such thing as mental indigestion. Or in the alternative, if there is, then you're no rebel. A man saw our last show, sat down and mulled. How can you explain life if you don't talk about life? But then again, he mulled onward, how could you ever understand economics if you studied the subject while ignorant of the fact that it exists only so that it can be studied? Okay, kids, said Kairu. Look out the window and smile at that one. One guy claims he once heard Kairu say that a man who's not creative is not really alive. He later said that he didn't believe he heard him say that. They wouldn't let one guy leave town unless he took all his modifiers with him. <laughs> and another guy said, I say good riddance, except that I have a speech impediment and I can't say good riddance. <laughs> yes, words are a terrible thing to waste. Oh, we've already done that one. <laughs> and Kairut said, the man with his hand out on the city street corner was saying to the passers-by, <clears throat> Those who take words to be inherently serious are indeed cultured and the cream of civilization. And a lad at his side tugged at his sleeve and said, But Papa, at home you've always said that such people are imbeciles. Hush, boy, cautioned the old man. <laughs> I'm trying to make a few bucks. <laughs> At no com and Kairut noted, at no company picnics in this reality are employees permitted to compete in three-eyed races. One man's rallying cry, cosmetic surgery for the young, mental prosthesis for the mature. <laughs> And Kairut said, 
When all a man has is kin, he tends to place its value higher than his hormones would have originally guessed. From the notepad of Kyrut, more logic that doesn't mean anything. The only place to count good taste is in the secondary world. But crap, what difference does it make since the whole thing's made up from start to finish anyhow? Well, you just calm right down there, young man. I'll tell you what difference it makes. It makes all the difference in the world, that's all. And a chap says, I thought you said this wasn't going to mean anything. The sign said, just ahead, garden full of critics. <laughs> and Kairut said, from a certain non-hostile view, the collective is a joke. And Kairut said, when it came to fresh thinking, the rebellious part of one man's mind was a volcano. And an older, more civilized part exclaimed, yeah, that's right, Mr. Vesuvius. Just treat me like your own little Pompeii. And he did. <laughs> And Kairut said, to help reassure himself, one man would make loud noises, but not mentally. <laughs> Once he realized the job confronting him, one man said, this is no job for anybody, much less me. Still another chap, whenever he'd step in self-made shit, would soothingly say, ah, yes, that a boy. <laughs> After all, added the philosopher, what are humans, if not that? And Kairut said, to rebel thinking, having to explain yourself is worse than having to pick up after yourself, <laughs> which is worse than coming after yourself and having to tell yourself, hey, pick that up. <laughs> And Kairut noted, item you won't hear anywhere else, or hear again after the first of the month. From the secondary view, if it had one, definition of life, the real conspiracy. One neighborhood would-be thinker and freelance bibliomaniac had this to say. Cheap books can contain expensive ideas, but expensive books can cost more. The man is the center of attention wherever he goes, so long as he doesn't leave home. And Kairut said, one of our younger correspondents, one of our younger correspondents sends us this guesstimate description speculates he. Hermits, artists, and geniuses are rebels that don't know what they're doing. And Kairut said, instead of completing their doctoral papers, several of the lambs ran outside and began playing wave your wiener. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, thought the great catch on. What if they ever catch on? And our sponsors would like to leave you with this word. Oh, my God. <laughs> and a friend of Kairut's made this startling revelation. All non-physical forms of human conflict are caused by men picking on one another's ideas, which were concocted in the first place to be picked on. Hey said a man. Don't try and tell anyone that. And why not? asked another man. Just don't, that's all, he replied. And Kairut said, one guy told his family, denseness will hide around your house and there's no one you can call to come clean it up. <laughs> Just to himself, one man noted, 
My best ideas are in the trash. <laughs> Though in some places they still spell distinction with a small s, Kairut went ahead and said, the ordinary have private parts, the rebel spare ones. <laughs> And a man asks, <laughs> how many potential neural rebels are there in the world? Then Kairut aimed this one at use. The ordinary mind's routine relationship with collective thought as reflected in his imaginary conversation from a child regarding its parent. I'm a big boy now. And I don't have to call home every day. Do I, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> and Kairut said, A certain reality, after considering the talent and intelligence of one of its creatures, and how the man had spent almost all of his life involved with the revolution, one day good-naturedly asked him, Are you crazy? And with a peculiar glint in his eye, the man looked back at life and said, probably. Today's electrochemical lesson as contained in this dialogue fragment. <clears throat> Alphabetical order means nothing to a clock. <laughs> ha! That's what you think. Worlds in 3D realities are round so that Pacific Standard Time won't run into Greenwich Mean, <laughs> nor, of course, Mary into the Little Lamb. And Kairut said, New thinking is the only entertainment that doesn't make any noise or leave a mess to clean up when you're finished. More humor news. Life gave everyone a name as a joke. And Kairut said, whenever the chips were down, one guy look up and tell his kid, keep an eye out for fresh incoming chips. <laughs> and Kairut pointed out the mutinously obvious. If you don't talk a lot, it don't count unless you do it on purpose. From Kairut, notice that need not be posted. The ordinary fail to find the obvious ever very revealing. Then Kairut returned to give an alt alternative version of an earlier one. <clears throat> A certain reality, after considering the talent and intelligence of one of its creatures, and how the man had spent almost all his life involved with this revolution thing, one day good-naturedly asked him, Are you nuts? <laughs> and with a peculiar glint in his eye, the man looked back at life and replied, You should know. <laughs> <laughs> and Kairut noted, One guy only had one hobby, but he said that was all right, since it took all the time he had anyway. And Kairut said, Standing high atop the very edge of the rim, a man shouted out into the depths of the canyon. What is the difference between being creative and being crazy? And the wind called back. A little in some places, a bit more in others. <laughs> and Kairut said, after a while had passed, an artist paused and said to himself, Life will talk to you, life will make you warm, and life will make you cold, but life will call to you. He then laid down his brushes and told himself that was about a wrap for the day. Mm -hmm.